10 years ago when I was starting out as the pastor in my very first congregation, a reporter called and asked me to do a, an interview for a profile piece in the local newspaper. Sure, no problem, I said. He and I spent about two hours talking about my background and about my vision for ministry in that congregation and all the things that I was excited about. And then he put away his notebook and he told me I could expect the article to come out in the Thursday religion section of that paper. And as we walked out of the church, he casually asked me what I thought about all of the controversy that was going on in the RCA, our denomination, about same-sex marriage, and specifically about the trial of Norm Cansfield that was coming up that summer. I didn't even think about it. The interview was over. And so I told him quite freely that I was good friends with the Cansfields and that I strongly supported them, that I was a proponent of same-sex marriage, and that I was helping to organize a prayer vigil on their behalf during the trial. The next around my favorite time of day, I woke up to my phone ringing with the first of many congregants calling to tell me that I was young minister supports lesbian wedding. Awesome. This was not a topic that I had discussed much with my dream and that gets you. in my comments
precisely because we care so much about them. I am pretty much willing to march up the hill of inclusion and die on it because I am convinced that the church is to be a place of welcome and embrace. Thanks. <laughs> been going through negotiations and have been preparing and they ended up not striking but for a while it looked like a compromise was not going to happen and I had been invited to participate in some key ways in the strike and because I am not quite as naive as I was a decade ago I was sharply aware of the reality that within this congregation there are vastly differing opinions on that individual situation of negotiations and on union caused a lot of trouble in our community here at First Reformed Church. My personal integrity obligates me to advocate firmly and publicly for what I believe is right. But I am not just one. My voice is bound up with the voices of many because I am part of It's complicated. We are a congregation of strong opinions, in case you have not noticed. <laughs> we are people who act on our strong opinions. And this is a really good thing. It's actually one of my favorite things about this congregation, is that this is a church of people who are politically and socially involved, who take strong conviction and who stand behind it. We are sometimes involved in opposite parties and opposing sides of issues. We disagree frequently. We disagree amongst the ministerial staff frequently sometimes loudly, and it's one of the things that I love about this church. But being people of strong opinion means that we may, at times, fall into those flesh tendencies, those tendencies to want to argue and conquer and divide, because that's mostly how we've learned how to disagree. Because we are people who are committed to living out our convictions, we especially need to keep at the forefront of our minds at all times that God, God invites us to something better, something more than the world's way of history. It's really easy to fall into that pattern, but there is a third way that does not demand uniformity, but invites us to something better, to unity. 
strikes me that Paul in this verse from the Corinthians never asks them to stop disagreeing. He assumes that they're going to continue to disagree. He assumes that they're going to continue to follow different people. Some people will follow him, some people will follow Apollos, but he invites them to take their differences out of the center of their interaction and make the central thing instead their common commitment to Christ. When we keep Christ as the foundation, our need to win dissipates. When our priority is the right relationship rather than simply being right, we can listen to one another and bring our perspectives honestly to the table without pressure to convince one another. And lest you think I'm getting all sort of Pollyanna from my on you, what I'm talking about is actually much harder than just being nice to each other. Because the fact is that I'm probably still going to jump into picket lines and protests. Such is the nature of me. And you are going to do things and support things that I do not like. But our unity doesn't mean that we have to stand by and pretend those disagreements don't exist. We might even be more honest in challenging one another. Because if we hold Christ as our foundation, we're not threatened by difference. We understand it as expected and as necessary. We might even understand it to enrich and deepen our relationships and expand our understanding of the world. John Hume, who was one of the primary architects of the Northern Ireland peace process, said, difference is of the essence of humanity. Difference is an absence of birth and should never be the source of hatred or conflict. The answer to difference is to respect it. Therein lies the most fundamental principle of peace, respect for diversity. And as it happens, we even hold this to be part of our congregational identity. In the covenant that is printed on every single bulletin, our fellowship shall not be dependent upon identity of theological opinion, or of outward circumstance, or of denominational concern, but shall grow from a common loyalty to Jesus a common commitment to serve the world we touch, and a common purpose to do justly, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. And so I invite you to do something that is strange to do within the church. I invite you to heartily disagree with each other and with me. In fact, you will have an opportunity to heartily disagree with me today if you come to the forum. I invite you to come and ask questions and disagree with me about this sermon or my various picketing activities or whatever it is that you want to discuss. Because I believe that this is an important part of what it means to be in Christian community. It's to be able to disagree and still hold to our common foundation in Christ. Just, you know, try to be kind about it. That's good. But as we agree, we disagree today and as we go on. I also invite us to remember that we are first and foremost members of the body of Christ, people of God, sharing one faith, filled with one spirit, baptized with one baptism, eating one bread, drinking one cup. And as we are fed by that one bread and that one cup today, we stand together on a single foundation. Which is Christ Jesus. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen.